today on X. You can also write to us at cheat at g4tv.com. Until next time, I'm Kristen Holt, and you've been sexism in gaming. Oh, good oh. lord. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video and keeping me in Package Tuna. Opera GX is on a mission to get you to break up with your current web browser, and they are here to entice your penis. With customizable browser mods, you might say, you can do this with other browsers. Well, guess what? I don't have all day to mod a browser when I'm one click away from an animated berserk background complete with copywritten music. And as simple as it is to install, you are one click away from uninstalling or picking and choosing what mods you want to pair together, like some sort of demented doctor with too much time on his hands to customize a web browser, which means you're probably not getting any dates, you weeb. Oh, look at that little keyboard sounds. Hmm. Oh, background music, now we're talking. As we all know, Chrome is a resource hog. Here's my tax bar to show you what my Chrome is doing. And as you can see, it's using as much RAM as my editing software. Jesus H crackers. No wonder it keeps crashing on me. The GX controller offers a little bit more control over the browser's CPU and RAM usage. You can now use your favorite apps on the sidebar. Finally, Zoomers can now use TikTok while browsing the web. And if you aren't into TikTok, you can also use Facebook Messenger, just in case you're a boomer. WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, Discord. The possibilities are limitless. God be praised. If you like what you see, use my link below to download Opera GX today. Tucker, the man, and his dream. I firmly believe G4 was only brought back from the dead because Tucker was dating Olivia Munn. They got together back in 2018. They went public with their relationship in 2019. Very Hollywood. Tucker's also 13 years younger than Munn. A cougar. <laughs> so maybe reviving this stupid franchise was for his boyhood crush. I can admit that we all thought Olivia Munn was hot. She could have did a lot less yapping, but still had nice little feet. Delightful. Well, that would explain the multi-year deal she had on the table with development options as well to make her own shows on the new G4. Olivia Munn is about to sign a multi-year, multi-layer deal for both on and off camera work with the relaunching of the G4 network. Hashtag G4, the rap, blah, 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 blah. But their romance was short-lived. Oh no! Ending within a year after going public. But the development deal was already done and dusted. Then Bun backed out, which was a smart move. Apparently she's worth $15 million, not because of her scary great talent, but because she was good at investing. But as someone who's been investing myself, usually you pay someone that's not retarded to do it for you. So I can't give her too much credit. G4 teased a comeback on July 24th of 2020. Tucker and Munn were publicly over in August of 2020, but they were over before then, but in Hollywood, they like to draw things out. Much like DSP and Panda Lee, the public <laughs> wasn't ready for such sad news. <laughs> That's one of my favorite games of all time. See? I knew I liked you, Ron. You knew you liked Ron? At what point? Yeah, because, well, like right now. Yeah. When did you? Hell, he's black! Oh. Oh. The G4 Thanksgiving special surprisingly had Adam Sessler there. After Boomer Remover took hold and swept the nation, Adam Sessler locked himself down in his basement for years to come with a terrible case of Trump derangement syndrome. It seemed like everybody was all jazzed up. It got a million views. May 21st, 2021, Mon gets with John Mulaney, who she was emailing ever since his wedding that she attended in 2015. Imagine your husband leaves you for the bitch you invited to your wedding. Oof, the sisterhood is cutthroat. It's all girl power till it's your man I want to devour. It was clear from the start, Tucker lost interest in this business venture fast and never took it seriously to begin with. I heard rumors of him having a office designed like the Emperor's throne room from Return of the Jedi. And it turns out those rumors were true. Churn at the top. Roberts rarely appeared at G4's Los Angeles studios, according to employees who worked at the office from the time of G4's launch, barring an interruption during the Omicron breakout. In the Los Angeles studios, Roberts had conference room-sized office based on the Emperor Palpatine's throne room from Star Wars, complete with imperial iconography. That meant camera crews were unable to film 
near it for fear of incurring rights violations, according to multiple former employees. And I quote, he had the largest office space and he never even moved in, said former employee. Yeah, that was probably like Gina from G4. But a G4 short did slip up and show the walls to the background of the throne room. It's so stupid I have to say it repeatedly. The throne room. Technically is a great idea. I would do something like this to intimidate workers. I also, with the help of Josh, was able to get the floor layout for G4 Studios. We had like a video tour, but neither of us remembered to record the video tour we were on. So yeah, you just got to have screenshots really. Uh, you look right here. Down and to the right, we have the Tucker Roberts Imperial Throne Room. Here's another photo of the throne room far off in the distance. Place looks like a goddamn wasteland. Needless to say, this whole setup was clown shoes. With Tucker MIA, the workload was shot off to Mama Russell. November of 2021, G4 goes live, and the rest I covered in my previous videos. Go watch them, you filthy bigot, and goddamn subscribe. I need it for God's sakes. Help me out here. Quit watching me drown and throw me a rope. <laughs>
was in the background, all Pikachu face, then going, I'm here for it. While little did we all know at the time, his open hand foundation was taking hundreds of thousands of dollars of charity money and stockpiling it for 10 years. Gerard was like smog from, or was it smog? from the Lord of the Rings. It only took Mudahar and another big YouTuber twisting his arm behind his back and shoving it up his ass to get him to finally send the money somewhere on December 9th of 2023. And it seems he also then put out his own video that only incriminated him more as he told people if they dug any further, they would get a lawsuit. Not long after that video dropped, audio of Gerard trying to bribe his way out of this video happening hit. I got nothing. Family of my mom and her memory, especially because this is such a personal thing for the last 25 years of my life. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be like, do you guys want money to help me hide this? It's not what this is at all. I'm just asking from a humanity perspective of like, if I am the target of this, I have 20 mouths to feed. I have sponsors, I have a business. I'm trying to make video games. I'm trying to get out of content creation so I don't have to worry about YouTube anymore and, and do better things in the world. And I just know because of my track record of things like G4 exploding, me being friends with John Tron when he was a racist. What? What the fuck? Uh, you know, I've been a part of like, you know, pro Jared, like. And thus I clothe my naked villainy with old odd ends stolen forth with holy writ and seem the saint when most I play the devil. Richard III. Villains who twirl their mustaches are easy to spot. Those who clothe themselves in good deeds are well camouflaged. After Fork's rant, some stood up in G4 to basically tout her as this amazing person and they all stood behind her. I'm grateful for spending my life with a woman who smashed glass ceilings. Yeah. Showbot. She really like pushed women forward by hosting IGN for a few years. I mean, the women couldn't vote before that day. If you don't hear the below, unfollow me and don't watch us. We're not for you. Oh, wow. I forgot he was that stupid. <laughs> a G4 senior vice president Blair Herder exits network after telling viewers who disagreed with Frost Grant to don't watch us. Whoever hired this guy, you're stupid. One rant undid millions of dollars of investment. Who knew what dumpy lesbian would be rating kryptonite? Everyone loved Ellen DeGeneres dancing down the aisles like she had cerebral palsy. Oh wait. Ooh, ooh. But Frost wasn't solely to blame. G4 was a mismanaged, muddled mess from day one. I'd say the day Olivia Munn was gone, Tucker was done with it, but that's just my personal opinion. This is high quality content creation. August of 2022 would be an interesting month. G4's ratings were clearly lacking. G4 had a $19 million income goal. And I doubt that their channels altogether collectively made $50,000 to $100,000 a year off of all platforms. And I'm being generous now. I'm not counting possible branding deals with cable networks because who the hell watches cable? Old people. And old people aren't watching G4. So once again... Terrible marketing. This is back we had venture capital and companies could just dole out cash to crap they knew would literally crash and burn. Comcast acts as G4 after it failed to meet a $19 million income goal, sources say. Thank you, D'Angelo. Despite the blood in the water, it didn't stop G4 members from trying to flex on Twitter. I see we decided to go full dark Brandon today. Ah, uh, Frosk getting in with the memes. Even though she's young, she's like an old lady you don't care about. Like an annoying neighbor. God bless her. Are you really thriving when you're average about 15k on a YouTube video? Pretty confident that the original G4 had better ratings than that. Weird flex, but okay, intern. G4 TV replies, thanks for the follow. Got him! Got him! If you watch my past videos, you know about the creative genius known as Mama Russell. From box wine to prime time, she left the network on August 31st, less than a year after taking the job in September 2021. G4 president Russell Aarons exits revived network. Gaming vet Joe Marsh expands duties at Comcast Spectre. 
Mama Russell had this to say on her exit. At G4, we never stop playing and can't wait to have our fans join us at our hilarious and fairly preposterous sandbox. I can't, dude. I can't. Really. If by delivered, you mean destroyed any fond memories the fans had, then mission accomplished. You go, girl. I'm sure the metaverse will be a huge success. Oh, wait. The number of the badges. And so when people approach an area, they'll be told, hey, you can earn this badge. Play this, yeah. go through. <gasps> Lessons from the catastrophic failure of the metaverse. But the Washington Post, which released an interesting article after the fall of G4, had a bit more to divulge on the leadership of Mama Russell. Leadership changed again in 2022 as Aaron's departed in July. Following a contentious all-hands meeting in which she was lambasted by talent for a lack of transparency, failure to realize promised diversity initiatives and other issues, ex-employees described Aaron's as a more consistent leader than Roberts. Roberts wasn't there. You could have put a box there and it would have been a more consistent leader because at least you saw the box. Said she left the meeting in tears. Former G4 staffers perceived Aaron's rocky tenure as evidence she had been set up to take the fall for Roberts. Damn you, Tucker, you did it again. I think she bears some responsibility for the leadership, but I think she inherited an impossible situation for Tucker Roberts, said a former employee. I'm not surprised she resigned two weeks after that incident. Good Lord. They emotionally battered Mama Russell for more diversity initiatives. To say that G4... Mismanaged money is an understatement. They would cut back staff and overwork the underpaid employees that were left behind while paying Twitch streamers up to $30,000 to show up for a day. Where is your guard? Where is your guard now? Content creators pay from G4 ran the gamut with two former employees saying regulars were contracted a year at a time. Mendez in May scoring six-figure salaries. Austin Show, whose live game show reliably pulls in tens of thousands of concurrent viewers with or without G4, made seven figures, according to one former employee. Jesus Christ. Neither Mendez nor May replied to the post's repeated request for comment. Yeah, they were like, I got the bag. I'm not talking to you. Former Kotaku employee. The day rates for some guests were steep. Speaking of the post, Austin Show said G4 had a budget for influencers, marketing, and that money was sometimes offered to streamers, but twenty dollars to $30,000 was the upper end, and the large majority made less if they were paid at all. So that means Hassan got $30,000. A lesser streamer got paid in exposure. You see what I did there? Big names, some of whom appeared on Name Your Price shows reoccurring game show, made $10,000 to $20,000 for brief appearances or raids in which popular streamers like iMain Pokemane showed up, good money spent. <laughs> Any would send their audience to G4's channel to boost its numbers, according to multiple former employees. They paid streamers 10 to 20 grand just to finish a stream and raid G4, dude. Every short visit by a popular guest could be expensive. Steincap, according to a former employee with knowledge of these figures, was paid 20 grand for a two hour call and appearance at G4 Esports program. Money well spent. An XG4 employee attributed the higher rates for streamers to the fact that any time spent not streaming on their channel would cost them money in terms of a drop in paid subscribers and a loss of advertising revenue. When the streamer is doing anything other than streaming, they're losing money, the XG4 employee said. Ultimately, collaborating with content creators didn't move the needle enough to justify the cost. No, really? God, they had an open pocketbook if you were a streamer, dude. Their audiences rarely ever came over, said a former employee. The uptick in viewership did not match what we are paying for these episodes. Oh my God. I am never gonna financially recover from this. Nice to see that upper management is still stupid no matter where you go. And everybody's wondering why all these tech companies are dying because they run like this. It's clear G4 had Hollywood boomer brain. They figured, oh well, buy views by getting these streamers on their show. That will build the audience instead of working on it organically like most people do. Twitch's fan base only moves when they have absolutely no choice. XQC grew because Ninja and Shroud went to Mixer for two years. Then Dr. Disrespect got banned. That's how Twitch viewers work. They migrate only on Twitch. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Stupid! You're so stupid! 
said G4 was probably doomed from the beginning. Uh, as soon as they signed the contract for that, um, what was it like the huge studio that they had? And after finding out how many like executives they had with, as you know, executive salaries expecting to be immediately profitable. The G4 studio itself was also a money pit. To rent the 54,500 square foot studio, it costs $3.05 per square foot. That comes to around $220,000 a month just to rent the G4 offices. As I stated previously, the Victory Media Campus was used by TMZ and Ellen DeGeneres Show until it was renovated in 2017 for esports and online BS like G4. September 21st, 2022, Kevin Pereira dips and no one left at G4 sees the writing on the wall. Thank you, Kevin Pereira. Add attack on the show. Kevin Pereira went on to do podcasts from a van down by the river. I'm not joking. I hit play. I see what looks to be a manager or handler in the back in like a pink robe that comes out of- October 16th of 2022. It was a day like any other day. Well- Amarath was crying on stream, admitting she had a husband and claiming that her husband made her a Twitch dot. Edit for recent times in 2023. She went back to doing spicy content despite supposedly allegedly being separated from her husband. So who's making her do it now? Don't ask questions. Markiplier on that day also said that he would do only. Oh, and G4 was officially over. They literally fired everyone online, locked the doors and wouldn't allow them back inside the studio to get some of their stuff. Dude, they closed down G4, and the G4 offices are back up on the market damn near 48 hours later. Venture Capital pulled the plug on G4 like only iced coffee cutting off gifted memberships to DSP streams. And much like Daddy Phil, the G4 employees were blindsided by it. Everyone else who was watching G4, even for a few minutes, knew that G4 was a sinking ship, and it would be amazing if it lasted a singular year. Yet the staff somehow just didn't see it coming. Ironically, the first round of layoffs happened in September 15th of 2022. And Frost um, did victory laps, letting people know that she wasn't fired. But she didn't survive the second round of cutoffs. I should take this moment to point out that Frost Twitter page had no traffic to it. The only time anyone paid her attention is when she was stirring up drama. Even when she attempted to talk about games, it somehow would turn into a victim segment about how people hated her. Ironically, a year earlier, G4 made a tweet that was pretty funny. All right, someone's actually getting fired. Team, as you know, G4 was reintroduced last year to tap into the popularity of gaming. We invested to create the new G4 as an online and TV destination for fans to be entertained, be inspired, and connect with gaming content. Over the past several months, we worked hard to generate that interest in G4, but viewership is low and the network has not achieved sustainable financial results. This is certainly not what we hope for. And as a result, we have made the very difficult decision to discontinue G4's operations effective immediately. I know this is a disappointing news and I am disappointed too. I want to thank you and everyone on the G4 team for the hard work and commitment to the network. Our human resources team is reaching out to you to provide you with support, discuss other opportunities that may be available, and answer any questions you may have. One week prior to the shutdown, the staffer was told that anything scheduled to air the following week was being pushed to a later date. We aren't really given a reason, but we're told shows like Attack of the Show and X-Play were no longer shooting on the dates they were planned to. Sources tell digital trends. It took me years to get in this industry and it sucks that people just got to decide overnight that 150 people just didn't have jobs anymore. Suck it up. Yeah, that's life, lady. Yeah, welcome to show business. Stop up. After this went live, many G4 people learned from Wario's Twitter that they were fired. Hey, this tweet is how I found out I lost my job. How neat. Gerard, the completionist. It's Gerard, Open Hand Foundation finally donated money after 10 years. How neat. On a flight currently, decided to get the Wi-Fi so I could shoot a text. Out of habit, open Twitter, dot, dot, dot. Laughing my ass off. The dude I followed to find a PS5 is how I found out I no longer have a job. Seriously, I'm still processing it. 
The people at G4 are absolutely incredible and deserve the best, way more than what they were served. Truly an honor to work with everyone there. Love you all. I don't know how all these people worked at G4. Saw how much most people that were fans of the original G4 hated it and didn't have a resume in order. Like if I worked on G4 and I was just like a normal editor or whatever, I would have been serving my resume to other companies and shows daily because I would know watching and editing this crap that it's a sinking ship. You literally have to be in La La Land to work in that environment and think this is cutting edge awesome stuff when it's garbage. I'm gonna challenge this because I don't believe that our content was terrible. No. Ah! This is the Love the Chili Pepper Lights. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yeah, we, we got that from a Chili's. <laughs> Eating good, huh? We are saving money. <laughs> hey, Adam's having sex with my wife. Oh, Adam. Wow, he's good at that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, this is just for a video. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, where do I take a shit around here? Oh, yes. Okay. So there's a bathroom that way, or you can just use David's. Ah, yes. David of Human Resources. Ah, Kratos. And who is. There's more. This is bonus content. Style points, Golden Boy. Style points. Wow. She is dripping with style points. That's, 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 that's commitment. Is that does not bode well for your team. Well, we got to Skullport, and then we met this really, really hot pirate. I mean, sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh. <laughs> I am not the jealous type, I assure you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, please, I want to G4's creative producer was fired while taking a mental health break from working. Congratulations, honey. Your break just got permanently extended. Honestly. My generation with these stupid phrases like mental health break. There is no such thing. You either nut up or you shut up. Oh, you're mean. Eat me. Life is mean. And it made me an animal. They forgot I'm him. So basically, uh, she was, I think even before she was fired, she was asking for people to donate money to her. Well, getting fired has her ready to work again. Would you look at that? Women today in America treat their lives as if they're serving in Kabul, Afghanistan, fighting against the most dangerous insurgents called accountability and self-reflection. <laughs> oh, God, people have trauma. Oh, shut up. I've been stabbed, chased by the New Jersey police officer waving a gun at me. I've been shot at three times, and admittedly the third time, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I got to tell you, Popeye's chicken had a sale, baby. But that's the name of the game. You know how the hood be. I'm not sitting here like, I got PTSD. Mama Susan after me. Meanwhile, this chick had extra workloads thrown at her from G4 staff shortages. And she was breaking down like an American POW locked in a tiger cage in Southeast Asia during Nam. My time on G4 ends during lunchtime on Sunday. Wish the best, especially for full-time co-workers and friends. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this will be tied to right-wing incels complaining about wokeness being the downfall of the network which pursued content in the age of shorts and twitch by the way it isn't wokies that killed a failing millennial focused gaming network so please keep your incel complaints on how the internet is soft to your 2012 gamergate era we do not care about you being bigoted in Call of Duty lobby in 2011. Ha 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 emoji. You're crying about humans being normal, huh? Hi, gay. <laughs> this response is all you need to know as to why G4 failed. It was mismanaged, no doubt. But the open disdain for the audience you needed to keep your heads above water during the, and I quote, shorts and TikTok era. If you thought G4 was cringe, which it was, you are now a right-wing incel. This dude's whole response is a litany of buzzwords and phrases strung together in a poor last attempt to own the chuds. <laughs> the chuds win. <laughs> I don't even know what a chud is, but you know. Adam Sessler went on a rant, a perfect example of a dude you thought was cool on TV that turned out to be a total mental case. If you ever need to prove that he was a little loony, keep in mind he did 90% or more of all of his G4 appearances from his basement. My guess is he was so afraid of Boomer Remover that he dared not interact with any other human beings outside of his home. <sighs> God, Adam Sessler tweets, bro. I'd rather read Chris Chan's like Sonichu 
manifesto. Want to send my best wishes to some of the best and most talented people I've ever worked with. Please hit me up if there's some way I can help. You're all too awesome to not find your way. Big love. Uncharacteristically nice from Cess. And to those misguided who need to send vitriol, go right ahead. I'll keep taking your hits like I've done for 20 years. I'll still be here just caring about the good people who got jacked. Well, that lasted all but five seconds. It started off so positive, and then it went south so very quickly. On brand for the cess. Your inability to listen to any criticism, no matter how valid for 20 years, is staggering. Your ability to listen without any regard for independent thought for 20 years is quite staggering, too. 20 years is Adam Sessler's Evo speech like DSP has. That doesn't really seem like a negative response. It's just somebody kind of going, Do you always have one writer who only knows one rhyme? Also, like real adults, unlike your mom, I have multiple incomes. Go cheap again, you desperate Nazi. Adam Sessler got woke, went broke. <laughs> oh, wow. So we're embracing stereotypes and unironically using Nazi as an insult for people who disagree with us. Adam, while we're over here being adults, maybe we could also grow a thicker skin and not lower ourselves to your mom jokes. Just a thought. Your mom got a thick skin. <laughs> Somebody took the high road and Adam says, <laughs> He's such a douchebag. I can picture Adam Sessler at his own funeral looking so miserable in a casket. It's like he never left us. Big shout out tonight to those who ran G4 for making my life more miserable than usual. When I have barely been working for them in the first place. In for a penny, in for a pound. I can't, my head hurts. This is as far as I'm going to go with Adam Sessler because this goes on well until January of 2023 and beyond. But one reoccurring theme with Sessler is this, the I'm rich LARP. He's been flexing for a few years now. So I took a little look into it. Sessler was a co-founder of Spike Trap, which raised $3 million for AI-based social media intelligence platform. So more of your data being harvested for companies to use. Fitzpatrick and Adam Sessler started the company in 2016, and it has 15 employees, or it had. Sessler, a well-known video game personality, left the company in March of this year, though Fitzpatrick declined to comment on the reason for his departure. Sessler left in 2020 of March, by the way, and Fitzpatrick declined to comment. Judging by how Sessler conducts himself online and in interviews, he's a miserable pile of shit. Sessler left Spike Trap in March of 2020, as I stated before. Reddit bought it in 2022. I'm sure he still had some stock in the company, and I don't really know how much it was acquired for. But let's not forget Morgan Webb turned down the G4 comeback, along with Olivia Munn, who was offered way more money than Sessler. If he has so much cash, why on God's green earth would he come back to G4 when he's hated gamers and gaming culture for the last 20 years? Because he needed the money. End of story. It cost a dick and a nut to live in San Francisco, baby, and all isn't free. Anyway, back on subject. After everyone was fired on October 16th, the YouTube page still had future live streams planned and remaining on schedule. Also, when I think about it, a lot of the shows near the end were all these stupid live streams where they sat at a desk and talk about stuff. If they weren't filming Attack of the Show or X-Play, wouldn't that be a clear sign that it was over? That's so funny. I just, I, you know, to a point, because I well, like to, to shorten me, things too. I shorten things as a bit. Like, I will say, like, yo, like, yo, hand me that, like, that, pa like, I would say something that like, pape. Pape. like, well, pape now is so I'm into it because me. I'm older and wiser. That's so funny I have less that, time yeah. on this earth, so like I do need to. Pape. Uh oh. I just put out an article just days after the G4 cancellation talking about how problematic gamers are as usual. People who identify as gamers are more prone to racist, sexist behavior. A new study says people who build their entire lives around a gamer identity are more susceptible to extreme behaviors. Yeah, and the people that are part of the Alphabet Gang right now are all just upstanding, normal, rational individuals that don't immediately try to cancel people or spread lies and rumors about them to get them removed from platforms or lose sponsorships because they're such normal people that base their entire personality around their sexuality or their pronouns. It's the gamers that are screwed up. He's out of line. 
but he's right. On October 26th, the G4 websites posted, we stopped playing. It's because their on-screen talent wasn't paying the bills. Zing! I'm free for weddings and bar mitzvahs. Adam Sessler goes on Vito's podcast and proceeds to inform you that he has always been a miserable human being who hates gaming culture and everything he's known for. During the interview, he does a few little odds and end rants about gamers and Gamergate beating that dead horse. I'll play you a tiny excerpt to torment you because I had to sit through a great deal of this, so you should too. Too much on next play, uh, which is like, here are three tweets that are dissenting from conventional wisdom. We will now call them everybody or most people, and now we have a story. Yeah. I keep telling you, man, for Adam Sessler to be independently wealthy, he can't even afford a good goddamn mic. January 18th of 2023, Frost decides to make her final annoying post before deleting her Twitter account forever. And she was never missed or noticed again. I've been angry for a long time with my peers for not using their power and voice to stand up for others in this industry. Had to come to some hard terms that people who I had known for years, who I thought were good friends, just weren't. Devastated me for a long time. Anyway, I'm leaving the industry. Found new work elsewhere. Probably a dive bar for lesbians. Or a roadie for Melissa Etheridge. This industry is really messed up. And what happened to me and plenty of others wasn't fair. Welcome to the club. Let me play you a tiny violin. And it could have been avoided if we had all stood up together. You let me down. But I get why. Cheers and good luck. Could you imagine being this chick's friend? I couldn't. She sucks. But let's keep in mind, this is a far cry from the major flexes she was making after someone tweeted her my video and she had did her little rant. If it makes him feel better. Oh, that was directed at me. I gained about 8K followers since that speech and got a lot more money on content payouts. So I didn't lose any money over his apparent disdain. Huh? I don't disdain you. I don't really care about you. <laughs> because honestly, it was not that deep. A few months later, Frost decided to try and cancel Henry Cavill and failed miserably. The backfire was monumental. This must have been another one of those moments when she realized nobody cared about her or liked her. And it must have been a startling realization. Henry Cavill said some very questionable things around me too and dated a 19 year old as a 30 plus year old. Seeing people throw themselves at his feet over the Witcher is weird. The show is whatever at best. And I replied, oh God, it's Frosk again. To drive home the fact that G4 TV was hyper diversity, equity, and inclusion based. From Jump Street, here's an interview done by Spawncast. Talking to the Twitch streamer, Misclick. This highlights the interviewing process for people that were up for a hosting position at G4. So why should we cancel Batman? And uh, what? I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, um, why, why do you believe we should cancel Batman. And I was like, why are we canceling Batman? He's like, cause he's rich and he's white. And uh, what? I was like, well, what, what, what do you, what do those two have to do with each other? Like, yeah, people believe that he just skates on the law. And then if someone of color did the same exact thing, they wouldn't get away with it. Like he does. That's a like, real ass question that they asked you. That's literally what G4 recruiting asked me. And um, like whatever, whoever their manager was or whatever their interviewers were doing. So my, I, I think that I was like, well, I mean, to be honest, like, uh, if I was getting like robbed or assaulted in Arkham or something, I wouldn't really care who's saving me. I don't care if he's rich and white. I just care enough that he's like actually like saving people. Cause are you going to do anything about it? And, uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't like that answer. What but when people cross killed G4, I was like, honestly, G4 has been it, dead Sessler. since the interview process. And then later on, another question they asked me was, okay, besides Batman, what other superhero would you cancel? Yeah. This is a dude asking me. So I was like, what the heck? So I literally, I I, I was like, I he's don't think I have an answer. And he's like, well, you have to give one or whatever. Like, you have to give one. Like, you can't just not. So I think I said something like uh, Punisher or something, even though he's like one of my favorites. I was like, Punisher? And he's like, good answer. And I was like, okay, whatever. I was like, I'm turning this job down. What was, but, the, what was the bad answer? <laughs> I, I not, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, like G4 was was scrapped before it even began. So that's my opinion on it. <laughs> Good for Miss Click. She's a real one. And this explains how someone like Frost got her job. Just from her last tweet on Henry Cavill alone, you know she would cancel Batman and say that the Joker was a victim of systematic racism against clowns or something. I don't know. By the end of January, articles started dropping about the failure of G4. Tons of them, actually. 
Adam Sessler went on a multi-day rant against gamers, or anyone that refused to huff his farts, really. Former G4 host Adam Sessler goes on a deranged multi-day tirade against gamers. You and yours are beneath me in all respects. Adam Sessler is a very hateful dude who should look into bubbling himself. Other members of the new G4 did move on positively and created their own podcast and web shows. I mean, if you look at Kevin Pereira, he's having a great time, even though nobody really cares. But you look at him and there's a genuine smile on his face. And then you look at Adam Sessler and it seems the Sess is stuck on being a douchebag on Twitter for a living from now until the end of time or when he probably drops dead in his couch ranting about Donald Trump or Republicans. Ultimately, G4 was a failed experiment before it even launched. From the mismanagement to the lack of interest from Tucker Roberts himself once Olivia Munn was gone to Mama Russell having to take over with no clear clue of what the hell to do, the diversity, equity, and inclusion hiring of people who found Batman problematic, Frost's rant that only highlighted the foolishness of diversity hires, and the open disdain for the fan base, underpaying staffers and overpaying streamers in a sad attempt to win the Twitch audience. It was over before it began, and the only people that didn't see it were the people who worked at G4. G4 is a relic of the past, and that is where it belongs, in our memories, where it will ultimately fade. It was a moment in time, lightning in a bottle, and it couldn't be recaptured because the people that made the show great behind the scenes were not there anymore. And the ones that were there were more obsessed with representation than doing something interesting. Making content for a modern audience is not how you make something memorable or even fun. That's how you make something generic, homogenous, and forgettable. Well, this is your stop on the cringe box. Off you get to dream big dreams or go to sleep to do your next 12 hour shift at Amazon. I have no words of encouragement for you. Keep doing what you do till it's done, done, done. Adios, bitchachos. Say goodnight, Fluffy. Good dog.